Right. I want to start tonight by doing a reading, a very special reading, a book called Until Today. It's one of my meditation books that was given to me by one of my very closest friends and one of our greatest counselors at Starting Point, Teresa Barrett. I miss her a lot, always will miss her. I have the beautiful opportunity of being with her on her deathbed and also to be able to perform her funeral. So it's really be great to be here. And every morning she wrote me a beautiful message and I get to read it every morning, which is really neat. I want to take a reading from that book from March 19th. It fits right into our topic for tonight. What the John Rogers wrote, we only are, we are only born once into life, but in life we are reborn many times. He was describing the many, many deaths we experience on our journey through life. We die to old ways of being, to be born in our power. We die to old beliefs, to be born in the truth. We die to habits of need, dependency and control, to be re born into reliance on spirit. We die to fear of spirit, to be born into the spirit of fearlessness. We are taught sometimes that death is the end. As long as you are still breathing, death becomes what we commonly call change. Until today, you may have not been aware of the many times you have faced death or the ways in which death can alter your state of being. Just for today, lay down your notions and fears about death and be willing to change. Today, I am devoted to accepting that I must accept death in order to experience the beautiful gift of change. I really wanted to read that because when I read that and meditated on that, it really rang home to me. Because I truly believe that when we look at the concept of life, and tonight we're going to talk about sadness, we're going to talk about acceptance. One of the hardest parts of grieving is coming to the state of sadness. In many ways, we look at sadness as that little period of thing called death, saying so long, saying goodbye, watching a part of our life come to an end so a new part can be born. And we see that in many areas of our life, physically, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and all different areas of life, we experience this constant process of change. The thing I've said so many times in life, and maybe it's something that's hard for us to accept. That's why acceptance is so hard. That the process of life takes us in a lot of different directions. And as a result, then, there's so many things in life we have to learn how to let go of. Until we can let go of them and be able to face them, can we go through the process of coming to a gift of acceptance. But there's kind of a war that goes on inside of each and every one of us. It's a war of what I refer to as the mind versus the spirit, or the ego versus the spirit. So many times in grieving and doing changes and going in new directions in life, we have a tendency to do it up here. And as a result, then we figure that we can either change it, and then many of us get guilty because we change it. Many of us are afraid to let go of the old so something new can be born. Many of us stay stuck in very many different ways. It's all part of the process of grieving. And everyone grieves differently. We all grieve in the way which works for us. There are many different forms of grieving, and some people get stuck in certain areas for long periods of time. I give you a good example of a gentleman I worked with for almost a year and a half. This gentleman basically came from my house, him and his wife, where his wife was very negative to him, treated him in a negative way. She ended up having major heart surgery. She ended up dying. And part of his grieving process was he had a hard time letting her go. And so he spent a good portion of his life beating himself up, telling himself that it's his fault that she died because he should not have had the operation, should, should have said no to it. He should have, should have, should have, should have, should have. 
you know, what that's all about. You know, we have to learn not to shoot on ourselves. It's a powerful process. But the bottom line is, today he's still stuck in his house. He has a big photograph of her. And all he talks about is what an angel she was, how fantastic she was. I miss you. And basically, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I was responsible for you dying back and forth. And he lives in that world. Even his kids come over and say to him, Dad, she never, she treated you lousy. Why do you say all these things? But see, he, the guilt, the fear, all these things are scaring him on the inside. And so he's constantly asking her forgiveness. He's constantly asking for forgiveness of his own self. That's an example of where we get stuck in bargaining. We get stuck in trying to figure it out. We get stuck up here. The two things we talk about tonight are not up here. They're down here. They're in our spirit. They're in our feelings. They're in the side of us. And they're difficult sometimes because we have to be able to get in touch with our feelings. Whenever you experience a change, and that's why I like the word change connected to the word death. Because I truly believe in life, we experience many deaths. On a physical level, our body keeps changing. It doesn't stay the same. Although many of us make an attempt to make believe it stays the same, but it really doesn't. The process goes on. There's things we did at one time that now we can't do. Coming to a reality of that and acceptance of that takes a lot of time. It also takes a lot of struggle. It takes so many times in course of ourselves, we have to work hard at it. Because there's so many times we have this thing up here keep telling us, yes, you can do this. I remember so many times in the course of my life, I keep thinking back that I could do some of the things I never did. And basically I keep thinking I can still do them. You know, many of us have what I call mental midlife crises, where I think I can be this again. I can go back to being that again. Maybe I can experience this. No. We have to be able to accept the reality of where we are. If your body is hurting, you have to accept the fact that it's hurting. There's a sadness in that. Because maybe you're at a stage of your life where you're beginning to experience different things. You may not be able to get up as early in the morning as you used to be. You may experience different types of things in the course of your journey. I know there's a lot of anti-aging creams and all kinds of pills you're supposed to be able to take. But guess what? They don't work. You still age. It's part of the journey. You have to be able to come to an acceptance of it. See, acceptance means coming into reality, being able to embrace reality and build a relationship with it. Once you embrace that reality, build a relationship with it, then you can make your adjustments in life the best way you possibly can. Many of us have also experienced in life the loss of someone close to you. And on my own journey, years ago, I, I'm an only child, I had my cousins were really my brothers and sisters. And I have a lot of memories, beautiful memories. At one time, there were 16 of us. We used to get together every year at Christmas time. We used to have a ball, really enjoy one another. But then it went down from 16 to 13, then to nine, then to eight. And as we got older, more people kept believing, kept believing us. Till finally now, there are only two of us. And now I'm the oldest one. Scary. But really, in reality, it's part of the process of life. But I've experienced it too as memories that come along with it. I miss my cousin Janie, even though she was a thorn in my side. I do miss her, though. You know, she used to always make fun of me because I had a thing when I was a kid. I used to be, she used to, I used to, have to make this breakfast. I used to make it, get a big bowl, fill a half with coffee and half with milk, then get a loaf of Italian bread, butter it real good, break it up, stick it in the coffee, and make my famous mush mush.
for breakfast in the morning. And Gina used to say, oh, you're so horrible. Why do you do that? You look like a little piggy. And she's go on and on and on and beat me up like crazy. You know, I miss her. I miss her. Because she was part of my life and part of my journey. But see, there's things in life you have to say goodbye to. Today, I can't do that because I have an eating disorder. So that takes care of that. But the bottom line is, I realize over and over again that that changes too. So life has this way of moving us one way or another. On an emotional level too, our feelings. Our feelings go through all kinds of changes. You know, many of us for a long period of time, myself included, lived in fear, guilt. And many of us went through a lot of different things. That's so what our emotions told us very many times. Remember back when you were... 15 years old, 16 years old. That's a long, long way back. I know that for some of us. But, you know, back then, you know, we were invincible. And back then, time never moved fast enough. I can't wait till I'm 18. I can't wait till I'm an adult. I can't wait till I can do this. I can't wait till I do that. And all of a sudden, you become that. And then you try to be something else. And then we get that idea that once I turn 30, what's wrong with me? Then we get scared. So the new, when you're 30, the new age is 40. When you're 40, the new age is 50. And it goes on and on until you reach 90. And then you're just going to say, okay. So it's a process we go through in life. We never know what the next thing is in life. That's all part of it. You know, I look at life today and I realize the fact I'll be 84 years old this year. And I thank God for many things in the course of my life. But things have changed, even on a spiritual level. You know, it's interesting how different people go through feelings in different ways. I know on an emotional and spiritual level, I was raised in the world of black and white, in the world of fear and guilt, in the world of worry, in the world of always trying to please everybody else. But things go through a process of change. You can't really stop them, although you'd like to. you like to go back. I look at my grandkids. My oldest grandson, Casey, when he was born 28 years ago, he was one pound, 13 ounces. I actually held him in. He was in the incubator. They would take him out and put him on our chest. And he actually could fit right in my hand like a slab of butter. That's how small he was. And the bottom line was, he made it through there, three months in an incubator, three months in going through this. And then finally, when he was ready to leave the hospital, we couldn't find any clothes to fit him. So what did we do? Took the clothes off my Build-A-Bear and put them on him. And that became his outfit to live with. We couldn't even find diapers for him. We had to create them. It's just totally amazing. And yet today, he's 28. He looks like a bodybuilder today. You know, he's huge. He's got muscles like crazy. He's been married three years. You know, he's getting ready to have a family. Oh, my God, it's crazy, man. What happened? Where did that little guy go? And all of a sudden, he's here. Where those 28 years go? And the concept of it. But the reality is, you know, we have to be able to realize the fact that Life goes on, the process goes on. The process of life goes on. Sometimes, you know, you have a tendency as you get older to want to sleep a little bit more. You want to be able to basically slow down. And yet you don't want to slow down. I know it's one of my big nemesis. You know, I keep trying to move on and on and on. I keep doing stuff. Even though I get help from certain people like Loretta, you know, I should be able to slow down a little bit. Take it easy. But I enjoy being out there. I enjoy being alive. And yet I know there's going to come a time when I really am not going to enjoy it that much. I have to slow down. In many areas of life, we have all slowed down. On a spiritual level, too, things change. As we go through the journey of life, our concept of a higher power, our concept of God, goes through a change process. Today, God is my boss. I have a conversation with God every day. 
It's the God of my understanding. I ask for guidance. I ask for direction. You know, I still get down on my knees as well as, as long as I can do it. It may come a time maybe I can't do it. Who knows? But the bottom line is, I realize the importance of knowing that life is going to change. My vision of God changed to a vision of love instead of a vision of fear. And yet, I still go through every once in a while. A little bit of guilt. A little things in the past. They come back because sometimes you go back up here. Remember I told you this in the codependency series? This is the sickest part of our body because it makes us crazy sometimes. Yet it has some good qualities too. It has knowledge, things of that effect. It has gifts, it has talents. But many of us have a tendency to try to control all that. Even discovering different things about yourself, about your gifts, we learn to let go and we learn to open up. We learn to say goodbye to things of the past, open up to new things in the future. Life is going to go on. I'll give you a good example of this. When I was a kid back in Camden, you know, we one of my favorite movies, it always will be my favorite movie, a movie called Sandlot. Kids just getting together and playing ball. When I was a kid back in the 40s, we had a baseball field at Broadway and Everett. And we had to go out to the field and bring rakes with us because the field had glass and all kinds of stuff on it. We had to clean the place up first. And then we didn't have a baseball bat, so we used an axe handle. Then my father made a baseball for us. Took a golf ball, put rubber bands around it, covered it with black tape. That was our baseball. Every time you hit it, it changed shapes. We had a lot of bad bounces, what can I tell you? But it was a game. We had fun. We enjoyed it. You know, we enjoyed one another. We didn't, you know, we didn't have to win. We didn't have to lose. Every time we never kept score. We just had fun. You know, and it's kind of neat to be able to do stuff like that. And yet as time goes on, what happens? It all changes. Even professional sports go through changes. At one time, I went to a ball game in Philadelphia and paid 15 cents to get in. Today, it's $150 to get in. Everything changes in the course of life. Back in my day, a lot of ball players used to work during it. You know, one of my gentlemen I met about 15 times in my life, he was a, a third baseman for the Philadelphia Phillies, named Willie Puttenhead Jones. Some of you may remember him from way back in the 50s. He lived in Camden, and in the wintertime, he worked in the supermarket. He was a, both as a cashier and uh, loading shelves. He was a normal person like the rest of us. He would come to our school and talk to us, spend time with us. You know, and then he was also a great ball player on the field. But again, today, no, that's, a lot of that stuff doesn't happen. Today, it's a whole different ball game. Now, I can be upset. I can want to go back to where it was before. We actually tried that in Holiday City. It's funny because for a good period of time, we can't do it anymore because we, you know, we're, we're a little older now. We used to meet every every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and we used to have a pickup game of softball. Of course, we had a lot, we had a lot of fun. And then we decided, like a bunch of nuts, enter a softball tournament. And we got to play a girls team in the first game. And of course, we had to explain to the girls, we had a different set of rules. When certain people made it to first base, we had to have somebody run for them. You know, so we had to be able to make some adjustments. We had this little guy, little Vinny, and never forget him. Probably weighed about 98 pounds. He was like a jackrabbit, he could really run. But catch a baseball? No. So in right field, we put him out there, but put somebody else with him so he wouldn't get killed while he was out there. So we had to make all kinds of adjustments. And by the way, we lost the game 41 to 1. So it wasn't too bad, you know, but we had fun. You know, and that's, that's what life really is all about. And sometimes we try to reenact, but we can't reenact, but we do what we can do. You know, it's just funny how life processes, how we go through things in life. And sometimes we have to watch so many parts of our journey. 
come to an end. We have to learn to say goodbye and be able to say hello to something new. Open up our hearts and our minds to new ways, new directions, new concepts. You know, we get upset. We, you know, we try our best. And I know living in the senior citizen community, we always get caught up in if only things were the way they were back in the days when we were kids and all this kind of stuff and everything else. We do it with music. We do it with everything else. But in reality, what are we doing? Reminiscing. It can't go back. Yesterday's over. It's done. We have to say goodbye to it. We have to love it and grieve it. But even when it comes to physical death, sometimes it's so hard to say so long. It's so hard to say goodbye. And sometimes we do it because we have to. Many people have lost children. They've lost different things in the course of their journey in life. And believe me, the most horrible things in the world is when a parent loses a child. Not supposed to work that way. And yet, can we explain it? Can we understand it? No. It's something we have to work through over a period of time. It's something that we never work through in some areas and in some ways. It's all part of life. It's part of the journey. You know, and many times we deal with what this gentleman did a lot of times is, you know, maybe if I had done this or maybe if I had done that, things would be different. We keep trying to reenact. We keep trying to figure something out. We keep trying to analyze things. Then we realize the fact we can't do that anymore. So the hardest thing is to learn to let go. And that's why the steps are so important. Because in doing the grieving process, we learn something. We learn that, yes, we come to that stage. You know, we talked about the different stages. We come to that stage where we have weeds and thorns we've got to clean out. Things we have to be able to let's say goodbye to. So growth can keep happening and keep moving up. That's where we look we can plant the seeds. We can teach what we can't do for others. And what we can do basically is kind of give the gift of our experiences to those behind us, hoping we can help them, of course, in the process. And all my own life, I realize now my father taught me so much, but I didn't truly understand it or realize it until later in my life when I through my, went through my own struggle and my own pain. So you never know where it's going to come from. You know, you hear me talk about this all the time in the meetings. I talk about the elders, the people from the old timers in AA and different 12-step programs who taught me so much, the simplicity, their beauty, stuff they had. And I'm always quoting the old timers. I'm quoting some of their stories, things they did, things how they changed and moved forward. And then one day somebody said, you talk about these old timers all the time. Are you still in, are you still in contact with them? I had to stop and say, well, most of them have died. Most of them are born. He said, well, I guess now, now you're the old timer. I said, I guess I am. You know, I, you know, you, do you really want to be the old timer? No, but you are. There's the reality. You have to be able to face it, to look at it. And that's where acceptance comes into play. Acceptance only works when you're able to bring things into reality. Embrace them, learn from them, grow from them, and be able to finally say goodbye. See, I said this so many times to you. There are four spiritual words I love and part of my journey, my spiritual journey. The first two are very simple words. It's called supposed to. Why are you who you are? Because you're supposed to be. Why did you come into the world you came into you were supposed to? Why did you experience the things you experienced because you were supposed to? Everything that happened in your life was a teachable moment. And yet I have to be able to look at that through the eyes of my spirit, not through the eyes of my head. Because that could drive me crazy. And so I come to a point in the course of my own journey where I have to face the reality of what life is. Yes. You know, I love the thing from Urkel when he always says, 
Did I do that? Yes, we did. We did lots of things in the course of our journey in life. Made a lot of mistakes. Went through a lot of turmoil. Isn't it great to be a human being? And yet all those things are teachable moments. If we can allow them to be, we can sort the weeds, the thorns out. We'll go to fourth and fifth step, the sixth and seventh step. Clean the stuff out so we can watch the growth and things change and move forward. It's hard sometimes as you get older to realize the fact that the world is changing. It's not going to stay the same. Is it positive? Is it negative? Probably a mixture of it all. What can I tell you? Everything in life is a balance of positive and negative. Some things we like, some things we don't like. Some things we get scared about, and some things we don't. I don't know. There are no answers. Believe it, I tried for years, years and years to fix the whole world and save the whole world. It doesn't work. You know, there's a good friend of mine in recovery, you know, and she gets a little crazy sometimes because she's determined that she's going to find the program, the, the program to help her to be able to help tons and tons of people and be able to change everything, you know. And then I keep reminding her of something. I say, please, please, before you go to bed at night, look in the mirror. Look at yourself. And how about just changing you and working on you? It took me a long time to get through my head, man. I got that Italian disease. It's called Brickhead. I got to do it the hard way first. You got to go through the struggle. You got to go through the process. That's what grieving is all about. You know, yes, we're all going to agree. We're going to experience change in our life. That's one of the reasons why I love the big book of AA so beautifully and so wonderfully. You ever notice that beautiful book? Everything in it is suggested. They tell you, take what you can use and leave the rest. Whatever works. The only requirement for membership is desire. Never once says you have to get it. Give you guidelines. And we all go through things our own way and find our way differently. Just like grieving. We all grieve in different ways. Some people are criers. Some are not criers. Some grieve in other ways. Simple ways. So it's all right. Whatever works for you. But you have to give yourself permission to feel, to go through the grieving process. Go through the change. You're going to lose people along the way. You know, our, our social life has changes. Many things we can't do anymore, we used to be able to do. Our connection with others changes. So if even our, set, our sets of friends change. Everything in life is always changing, 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 changing. And for many of us, that gets upset because we'd like it to be a certain way. But it changes. I told you the story when I went to my grandson's wedding, the one that's 28 years old now. When I went to his wedding, he had a really young disc jockey there, and they were playing all their music. And, you know, everybody's jumping up and down and bouncing around, and I couldn't understand any of the words. And so I went over to him and said, I said, how about if you play a little Tony Bennett slow so we can dance to it? And he actually said to me, who's Tony Bennett? I wanted to, I wanted to pick him up and shake him. You mean you don't know who Tony Bennett is? He says, no, I never heard of him. Oh, okay. So I got very, I said, oh, my God. But again, today I can accept that and I understand it. His generation has their own Tony Bennett. Might not be like the one that we had, but also it's the one that they have. They look at us and say, oh, that was weird, weird music back then. We look at them and say, isn't that weird music now? Isn't that funny how life is? And yet that's how it's supposed to be because we have generational aspects, changes, different ways the way things go in life. So we're always saying goodbye to something and hello to something new. Now the hardest part, keep an open mind, keep learning, keep growing. To do that, we're going to be able to say goodbye. Enclosure is the hardest thing in the world to do. That's why for some people it takes 
years and years to really go through the grieving process. Do you ever totally get through it? I don't think so. Because memories will come back to you. You remember things from people, especially when you lose someone that's close to you. The first cousin I lost, I can remember that now. He was only 32 years old. He died of an overdose, you know, and basically uh, he was 32 and I was like, I don't know, 20, 21 years old. And I lost my first one. And it's so powerful to look at that. And yet so many people don't want to admit the fact that it happened. Do I have memories of him? Yes, I do. I remember a lot of this stuff. And yet it's sadness too. And that sadness is so special. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to be down a little bit. It's okay to go through changes. A good friend of mine, she's a grief counselor, said to me, you know, sometimes you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to feel miserable. You're not going to feel good at all. You're going to feel like the whole world is coming to an end. She said, it's probably good for you to feel that sadness, to feel those feelings, to watch things end, to watch things die, to watch things reborn to a new way in life. It's hard when you go through the struggle with it. I said that earlier when did the reading. Teresa was a very special part of my life. You know, I can go back and look at Teresa. I met her in a rehab in 1981. I never forget her as long as I live. You know, I gave a talk at a rehab when I was a priest after the talk. First of all, she looked like a truck driver. After the talk, she said to me, you're a priest? I said, yeah, I hate priests, she said. I hear everything you said, that. She I uttered a couple more words at me, which I won't say here tonight, you know. And she ended up becoming my best friend, person I loved and went through life with. Was she a character? Wow. One hell of a character. And we know her before she died. Here's how what kind of a character she was. She called me over to her house. She said, come on over here. She said, I'm going to die soon. I said, okay. She said, now, here's what I want you to do. You're going to do my funeral. She didn't ask me to do her funeral. She says, you're going to do my funeral. Now, here's what I want you to do. She had the whole damn thing outlined already. I said, okay, whatever. She said, and at the end of it, <clears throat> I have one final message I want to give to everybody. <clears throat> and so they taped it. <clears throat> and so we did the funeral. It must have been 250 people at the funeral. And I said, damn this is not me really doing this funeral. This is Teresa doing it, I said. <clears throat> but I really did the thing the way she wanted it done. And at the end, of course, she had to get the last word in before she said goodbye. <clears throat> and I just love that. I love being with her as she did leave this world. And yet I still remember her. I remember so much about her. My favorite thing I remember about her when we first got Starting Point started over here in New Jersey, we had a little apartment when we started it. And of course, A, people have to have coffee. <clears throat> so she did a coffee bar. She made a coffee bar in our bathroom by putting plywood over the tub. And that was the coffee bar. And we had a nice place to sit. It was pretty nice to have your coffee. You know, you had to do a few other things there too. So it was a combination of everything. <clears throat> and we laughed and laughed and laughed about all this stuff. And that's why it's good to have memories, but you can't go back. Somebody said to me the other day, at starting point, you made so many changes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know, kind of. <laughs> she said, they said to me, there's so many changes. He said, starting point isn't what it used to be. I say, really? I said, it's not. I, you want to go back to what it originally was? That means we've got to put all kinds of beds in starting point, have a soup kitchen outside, you know, and then basically bring in people off the streets to live there. He says, you want to do that, it's okay, but don't ask me because I don't have that kind of energy anymore. I had it one time, but I don't have it now. And that's okay. 
So you pass it on, pass it on to others. Told Loretta it'd be a good project we could do in an in, in, in lecture hall, you know. And of course, they look at me with those. I get those looks all the time. It's totally amazing. <laughs> but you know, life is a constant process of change and growth. So I guess what I'm trying to say tonight in a real simple way, <clears throat> I never make anything simple, but in a simple way, sadness is part of life. Feeling it is fantastic and ugly at the same time. Going through transition and change is part of life. Opening up to new things and new directions is part of life. We have to... <laughs> What's going on with me tonight? I got a frog visiting me. I think Carol did that to me on purpose. <clears throat> but the bottom line is I'm learning also to realize that you go through life, try not to take it too seriously at the same time it's serious. It's such a combination of so many things. And so tonight in my prayer, I'm going to ask that all of us allow ourselves to grieve, allow ourselves to feel, allow ourselves to be human. And remember, everything's down here, your spirit, your energy. Give this thing a break. We can go in both directions, but this thing sometimes can make you nuts. You have to work down here, your process of it. So tonight I'm going to ask in a special way. <clears throat> I asked Loretta to put up a photograph of our memorial wall at starting point. And as I say the prayer tonight, I want to kind of bring in and thank God for all the beautiful people that have gone through our doors and part of our journey. And I love walking through that room because there's so much memories and things in that room. And I tell them all the time, save a spot for me. Because one day I'll be up there too. It's all part of the process we go through in life. So it's nice just to be able to experience that and go through it. And so let us pray. God, we come before you in prayer tonight. We ask the God of our understanding, our divine presence, to guide us. Teach us to look at this beautiful wall and realize so many of us have experienced so many beautiful things in the course of our life. And sometimes we need to say goodbye, but not to let go, to realize that we can totally remember the past. We ask you to take all these beautiful angels who are now on our wall to be our guide and be our strength as we continue the journey on this earth, realizing that one day we too will be back with you. We open our hearts, we open our minds, we open to prayer. We ask for your guidance, for your direction as we walk the journey of earth, realizing that we are human. Help us to be able to be people of grief, people of learning, people of growth. Teach us to be able to say goodbye and say hello, to be able to realize it's okay, to be able to remember, to look at the past, to learn from it and grow but to allow and not to keep us there. We must move forward into where we are today. So we ask God to bless us, guide us, be with us and help us on this journey. But thank you so much for all the great teachers, the people that have touched our lives, people that are part of us on the journey today. We pray and we ask this every day and we pray it in your name, amen. <clears throat>